3,681 years before the Battle of Yavin, the ancient Sith Empire would launch an attack against the Republic and the Jedi Order, recapturing their ancient homeworld of Korriban and declaring the Great Galactic War. After decades of fighting, the Sith Empire would surprise the Jedi and the Republic with an offer to negotiate a peace settlement, though not before they made one daring last move. Sith forces led by Darth Malgus waged an attack on Coruscant, with the Jedi Temple being their primary target. Ven Zalo fought back as the head of the Jedi security, personally slaying nearly half a dozen Sith before facing off against Malgus himself. After a fierce lightsaber duel, Zalo was ultimately cut down, with his death signalling the Jedi's defeat. His death would not go unnoticed however, as his former apprentice, Arin Lanier, would seek to avenge her master, though she would ultimately abandon her quest and leave the Jedi Order. The former apprentice of the Jedi spymaster Tholm, Quinlan Voss was trained on his homeworld of Kifu as his people were reluctant to let him leave. After the death of his parents, Tholm took him to the Jedi Temple for further instruction, where he would go on to be taught alongside the young Obi-Wan Kenobi. Quinlan would eventually pass the trials, attaining the rank of Knight and later Master. He would also go on to train the young Padawan Ayla Secura, raising her to knighthood. After the outbreak of the Clone Wars, Voss served as a double agent for both the Republic and the CIS, pretending to fall to the dark side in order to gain the trust of Count Dooku, though his dark tendencies would ultimately cause him to legitimately fall. Eventually he would redeem himself, slaying the Dark Jedi Sora Bolt during the Siege of Seleucami. When Order 66 was issued, Voss was among Jedi Masters Yoda and Luminar and Dooley on Kashyyyk, narrowly surviving attacks from his own clone troopers Quinlan would go on to marry and raise a child fading away into obscurity. Ven Zala was a human male of an undetermined age, though he appeared to be within his physical prime. Zalo possessed excellent speed, agility and strength. His speed and agility was such that he could casually evade and counter attacks from multiple Sith at once, even using the momentum from evasion to set up for a follow attack. His strength was not to be trifled with. As noted within the novel Deceived, he was able to compete seemingly easily with the strength of the hulking brute Darth Malgus. Their blades clashed, sizzling in opposition. Each used the force to press against the strength of the other but neither had an obvious advantage. Zalo has also demonstrated an impressive level of durability, able to rally quickly from being kicked square in the chest by Darth Malgus, and then proceeding to immediately cut down two Sith. Soon after, he was blasted with a powerful force push that sent him hurling through a pile of rubble, and again, he almost instantaneously managed to rally and evade an attack from Malgus. At the end of the day, Ven Zalo was a fine example of peak human physicality. Quinlan Voss is a male Kiffer, and since he was a contemporary of Obi-Wan Kenobi, this would make him roughly 38 years of age at the time of Revenge of the Sith. As a Kiffer, Quinlan is as close to human as can be, and he was otherwise only distinguished by the golden stripe across his face and his skills in psychometry, a form of telepathy rare among Kiffer. This ability allowed its user to read inanimate objects, though this does little to nothing in battle. Quinlan's physique was very impressive. His strength was prodigious, one of the best demonstrations being how he managed to break through a solid metal door and knock it off its hinges. Also, despite his large size, he was incredibly fast and agile, traits that would have no doubt been pushed to the limit by his mastery of Form 4 lightsaber combat. But most of all, Quinlan's most notable physical attribute was his hardiness. This is a man who went on to fight two noted Jedi killers despite being injured, considering the odds to be unfair for them. During the execution of Order 66, Quinlan endured a tank explosion, and was able to get back up and even continue fighting and remain on the run from his now turned troops, despite that in his own words, his lungs were burnt and his right arm was all but useless. In short, Quinlan Voss is a physical tank.
This one is decidedly simple to call, but I will of course explain my reasons just so nobody misunderstands the choice behind this verdict. In regards to demonstrated physical output, Zalal and Voss are comparable. Both have displayed an excellent use of strength, and both were capable of some impressive displays of speed. However, the one factor in where they differ is the respective levels of physical hardiness. While Zalal is capable of enduring some considerable hits, he has yet to display anything on Quinlan's level. Granted hardiness doesn't affect physical output, but if either or both were to become injured during this bout, then the one who can better fight through the pain is more likely to come out on top. Quinlan Voss gets the physical edge. Ven Zala was a battle-hardened and masterful lightsaber duelist. His skill so great that the Sith Lord Darth Malgus considered him to be his greatest kill, even over Jedi Battlemaster K of Zenderach. Zala's preferred form is not confirmed in any source, though based on his use of speed and frequent use of force-assisted acrobatics, we can infer that his preferred form was Form 4 Ataru. Ataru is a highly offensive form with heavy focus on speed and agility, using force-assisted acrobatics to outmaneuver and overwhelm opponents. For obvious reasons, it is an extremely exhaustive form and best used in short bursts. Ataru also has a heavy focus on using every part of your body as a weapon, by incorporating various physical strikes into its sequences. Despite Ataru's purely offensive focus, Zala was perfectly capable of assuming a defensive role, utilizing his inherent speed and agility to anticipate and outmaneuver an enemy's assault. Zala's application of the form was formidable, and yet despite the fact it was designed for single combat, he possessed a solid level of effectiveness against multiple assailants, overwhelming one adversary as quickly as possible and moving on to the next, even using the momentum from one attack to set up for another, or even allowing him to counter and evade an incoming attack, which speaks volumes to his environmental and spatial awareness. In my view, however odd it may sound, the greatest testament to Zalo's skill was the circumstances of his death at the hands of Darth Malgus. Malgus stood tall as one of the greatest duelists of the time, and while he wasn't quite at his prime yet, he wasn't far off, and despite his overflowing rage, he was an intuitive and calculating duelist, and despite this, he wasn't able to find any weakness in Zalo's offence and thus resorted to trickery to achieve his victory. To better explain, I will quote the novel Deceived. Eschewing speed and grace for power, Zalo loosed a flurry of rapid strikes, slashes and lunges. Malgus parried one blow after another, but could not find an opening to mount his own counter-attack. Lunging forward, Zalo slashed crosswire, Malgus parried, and Zalo slammed the hilt of his saber into the side of Malgus's jaw. A tooth dislodged, and his respirator was knocked askew. Malgus tasted blood, but he was already too deep in the force for the blow to do real damage. He staggered backwards a step, as if the blow had stunned him. Seeing an opening, Zalo stepped forward and cross-cut for Malgus's throat, as Malgus knew he would. Malgus turned his blade vertical to parry the blow, and spun out of the blade lock, reversing his lightsaber during the spin. He rode it into a stab that pierced Zalo's abdomen and came out the other side. While this shows that Zalo may possess a weakness to unorthodox strategies, it also speaks volumes to his own skill. Forcing somebody as skilled as Malgus to resort to trickery is nothing to thumb one's nose at. Ultimately, Ven Zalo was a fantastic example of skill and refinement. Quinlan Voss was a talented lightsaber duelist, with a rather diverse skill set. He is primarily known as a master of Form 4 Ataru, as can be seen by his frequent integration of unarmed strikes and his fast-paced and agile swordplay, backed up by frequent use of force-assisted acrobatics. Alongside his mastery of the fourth form, Quinlan is also known to be a master of Form 5, specifically the Xi'an variant. Form 5 was created as an answer to Form 3's lack of offense, using the tactic of following up defensive parries with instant offensive counters. It had two variations, Xi'en and Gemso. Like Sarisu, Xi'en focused on blast deflection, but rather than harmlessly deflecting bolts to the side, Xi'en focused on aim deflection, deliberately aiming bolts back at the shooter, something Voss has demonstrated considerable skills in, as well as his almost constant use of the reverse hand grip tailored to the style. Quinlan has also demonstrated a proficient skill as a marksman, perfectly capable of employing a blaster when the situation demanded it. The most unorthodox skill in Voss's bag of tricks would be his skills with Vapad. 
Vapad was a variation on the seventh lightsaber form Juyo, created by Mace Windu and Sora Bolk. But whereas Juyo was vulnerable to counter-attack due to its focus on offense at the expense of all of the factors, Vapad was designed to answer this weakness by creating a superconducting loop of energy between the user and an opponent, feeding off their opponent's aggression to fuel themselves. However, the only time Vapad has ever been successfully used was during Mace Windu's battle with Darth Sidious. And it must also be noted that Mace was the only practitioner to truly master the form, whereas his other two main practitioners, Sora Bulk and Deba Balaba, fell to the dark side. Granted, Quinlan was able to overcome the darkness within himself, which would ultimately allow a certain level of proficiency with the style. However, since the form has only been successfully used once by the one true master, this essentially makes Quinlan's application of the form a regression back to Juyo. Nevertheless, this would still expand his skill set, enabling him to draw from his darker emotions to fuel himself through combat, and the additional movesets from Form 7 would bolster his combat versatility. With all that being said, Quinlan had a considerable skill, able to fight off two of Dooku's Dark Acolytes at once, and do the same thing to two noted Jedi killers whilst injured. However, he was essentially stalemated by his former master Tholm, only winning when he shorted out Tholm's weapon with a Cortosis Gauntlet. He was also dominated by the Council Master Aegon Kolar, and during his final battle with Sora Bolg, he was frequently thrown around and kept in a near constant defensive posture, only winning when he received the aid of Aayla Secura and Tholm's battle meditation, allowing him to overcome his inner demons and then secure victory by way of cheap shot. Though he can't really be blamed for his difficulty with Bulk, as he was fighting someone who was skilled enough to fight evenly with a slightly holding back Mace Windu. But regardless, Quinlan Voss was a versatile and talented duelist, and his rank as a Jedi Master was well earned. The deciding factor for these two comes from the circumstances of their most well known fights. While Zalo lost his fight with Malgus, he ultimately still managed to drive the Sith Lord onto his back foot, and thus force him to resort to an unorthodox tactic to achieve victory. By contrast, Quinlan was, for the most part, on the losing end of his fight with Bulk, and like Malgus didn't secure victory until he employed a cheap shot. While it is apparent that Malgus may have been slightly fatigued by the time of his fight with Zalo, this fatigue would have been swept aside after he witnessed from what, from his point of view, appeared to be Zalo killing his lover Alina, and therefore propelled him into a newfound rage. So overall, due to the respective demonstrations of skill and combative performance, I feel confident in saying that Zalo would be able to pressure Voss. Not enough to stomp Quinlan, but enough to award him an advantage nonetheless. Ben Zalo gets the edge as a martial artist and lightsaber duelist. Ben Zalo was not a dedicated combative force wielder, yet he was ultimately no slouch when it came to his applications in combat. His application of physical augmentation would push his physical traits to the superhuman levels, allowing him to match Malgus in strength and enable him to evade several attacks from him and other Sith. His telepathic skills are unknown, though we can assume that a fully ranked Jedi Master would possess skills with the basic mind trick. His use of telekinesis was proficient and straightforward, and he possessed a considerable affinity for chaining such attacks into his lightsaber sequences, such as how he managed to force push Alina Daru into a stone pillar. The novel Deceived even makes note of him successfully landing a force push on Malgus's rival, Lord Ardras. Zalo leapt over the blow and unleashed a blast of energy that sent Ardras skidding on his backside across the hall. At the end of the day, Ven Zalo may have been a basic and straightforward force wielder, but he was far from a novice. Quinlan Voss lived and trained as a Jedi Guardian, meaning that he preferred to focus on the development of his lightsaber skills rather than his studies of the Force. Yet despite this, he was no amateur, and possessed both considerable power and variety. His application of physical augmentation was proficient and effective, allowing him to perform the superhuman feats of speed, strength and agility for which the Jedi were famed. His telepathic skills were well developed. He was capable of compelling weak world subjects to do his bidding with the basic mind trick even inducing relaxation and sleep. 
As an undercover operative, Quinlan was highly proficient at cloaking his force signature and moving about undetected. After his brief fall to the dark side, Dooku trained Quinlan to forcibly rip information from a subject's mind. He was also trained to use the Beast Trick ability, one of the best demonstrations of this power being how he used it to tame a serpent on Kashyyyk and command it to attack pursuing clones. His use of telekinesis was effective and powerful. He possessed a natural affinity for freely chaining such attacks into his lightsaber sequences. He has consistently penetrated the force shields of opposing force wielders. He has thrown around considerably large objects, such as how he threw a speeder bike on Kashyyyk, and he was even able to destroy a small section of a cliff. His most insidious application of this power was his skills with Force Choke, a power he made frequent use of during his fall to the dark side. Perhaps Force's most notable use of the Force came from his use of Force Lightning, having used it for interrogation against Paul Secura, and in combat against Volvay Karko. And although Karko stated that Quinn was a novice of the power, this doesn't detract from its potential and usefulness, as Lightning even at its lowest intensity has the ability to incapacitate or stagger a target upon successful impact. Overall, Quinlan Voss may not have been among the greatest force masters of his era, but he was almost certainly a master in his own right. This one is more clear cut. While Zalo is certainly a capable and significantly skilled force wielder, he is yet to display the frequency, variety, and magnitude that Voss has. Quinlan Voss gets the edge as a force wielder. To briefly compare their equipment, both wield standard slightly oversized lightsabers fitted with green Adagan crystals, the only advantages provided being their familiarity with their own handiwork. I declare both combatants equal in weaponry. And now, the verdict. Like the majority of fights within the Star Wars universe, this fight would begin as a pure lightsaber duel. The initial class would be a demonstration of offensive prowess. As the fight progresses, Zalo begins to gain the upper hand, outpacing Quinn. Zalo lands a punch to Voss. He staggers back and lashes out with a force push at Ven's attempted follow-up attack. At this point, Quinlan takes the offensive initiative, making more frequent use of his heightened telekinetic might and possibly even chaining in bursts of lightning. Eventually, Quinlan's more frequent use of the Force and his own considerable skill would be able to keep Zalo off balance just long enough for Quinlan to force an opening and exploit it. And thus, I declare Quinlan Voss, the Grey Jedi, the victor. Well guys, as always, thank you for watching. Feel free to leave comments and suggestions below. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Where is she?